Hi, I'm Aaron. I'd like to read to you about Maximilian Kolbe from this book, Stories of the Saints by Cary Wallace with beautiful pictures by Nick Thornborough. One day, Raymond misbehaved so badly that his mother was exasperated. Raymond, she said to him, what is to become of you? Raymond couldn't stop thinking about her question, so when he went to church, he asked God, What is to become of me? Suddenly, he saw the Virgin Mary standing in front of him with two crowns, one white and one red. Somehow, Raymond knew that the white one stood for a pure life, and the red one meant dying for God. Are you willing to accept either of these? Mary asked him. I'll accept them both, said Raymond. After his vision, he and his brother joined the Franciscans, and Raymond took the new name Maximilian. Maximilian studied philosophy and theology and taught at a seminary in Poland where he was from. He started a printing press for books about the spiritual life then went off to found monasteries in Japan and India. But eventually bad health forced him back home to Poland, where he became the head of a monastery and started a radio station. While he was gone, everything in Poland had changed. A leader named Hitler had come to power in Germany and had started making speeches about how he wanted to take over the world. Some people thought it was all just talk, but then, Germany invaded Poland and started World War II. As the German Nazis swept into Poland, Maximilian told all his monks to get to safety, but he didn't leave his monastery. Instead, he turned part of the monastery into a hospital and hid thousands of Polish and Jewish people who were fleeing from the Germans. Maximilian's father was from Germany, so the Germans thought Maximilian was German like them. They offered him the chance to sign documents to prove his German heritage and keep him from being mistreated with the rest of the Polish people. Maximilian refused to sign the documents, but he did get permission to keep his publishing company open, and he began to publish a steady stream of anti-Nazi books and pamphlets. It didn't take long for the Nazis to arrive at the monastery gates. They arrested Maximilian, and took him to a camp called Auschwitz, where they imprisoned people they thought were their enemies, and almost no one made it out alive. At the death camp, the Nazis hated priests and treated them much worse than the other prisoners. Maximilian could have hidden the fact that he was a priest, but instead, he led prayers, heard confessions, and counseled anyone who needed help, just as he always had. He even managed to smuggle bread and wine into the camp so that he could celebrate communion. Like everybody else, Maximilian had to sleep on a board, move rocks and trees, and carry dead bodies of prisoners to the ovens to be burned. But because the guards hated priests so much, they singled him out for special punishment. One day, a guard tied a huge piece of wood to Maximilian's back and ordered him to run. Maximilian tried, but his weak lungs didn't hold out for long. Once he fell to the ground, the guard kicked and whipped him. Then, three prisoners escaped from the camp. To keep anyone else from trying to get away, the guards decided to kill ten other prisoners. Everyone was lined up together, and the guards walked up and down between them, pointing out people at random. When someone was chosen, the guards yanked them out of line. But when the guards chose a man named Franciszek, he couldn't bear the thought of what might happen to his family without him. My wife, he cried out, my children. Maximilian stepped forward. Take me, he told the guards, instead of him. So. The guards shoved Franciszek back into the line and took Maximilian in his place. The guards locked the ten prisoners they had chosen into an underground cell. 
where the men were stripped of all their clothes and left without water or food to die. Even locked underground, thirsty and starving, Maximilian prayed and sang hymns and reminded all the men that their souls could not be killed. After two weeks, without food or water, Maximilian was one of the few men in the cell still left alive. By then, the guards had become impatient. They wanted the cell for other prisoners, so they injected Maximilian with poison. But even as the poison pumped through his weak body, Maximilian was peaceful. He knew that no matter what any man did to him, his soul belonged to God. Thanks for listening.